Welcome on the show, Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott, and wow, too many things to discuss today and too many things to analyze. We might get into some trouble today, Mukayo. Mm. We might too. Well, we might call out a few names. Yes, we will. Okay. Former Nigerian international and one time vice chairman of Lobby Stars Football Club of Makadi, Dominic Yofa, has been appointed the new vice chairman of the club following the resignation of the former vice chairman, Benway State's deputy governor and chairman of the club, engineer Benson Abono. I made the announcement today, that yesterday, Monday, 21st March, 2022, the engineer Abono also disclosed that the former vice chairman of the club, Mr. Tana Anofia, has resigned and the entire management team has been dissolved. According to the club, media officer Emmanuel Uja, Deputy Governor further stated the decision to disband the former team was taken by stakeholders after due consideration over the abysmal performance of the club in their last five matches. Now, as much as everybody out there is going to... Now, Kay and Debola and Francis are going to help me put the phone lines on the screen. And we're going to find out who cares, really. Uh. Nigeria Football Club. But it, Nigeria Premier Football Club. Whatever you want to call it, really. But it seems like a major um, step to dissolve an entire organization. The whole management has been dissolved. Just to, just to prevent relegation. I mean, sometimes there's something to be said about starting over from scratch. You, you burn down a forest to fertilize the ground and hopefully over time re-energize re the soil but this is football this is complicated in so many ways and so many people's livelihoods have just been significantly impacted what is the way forward and is it it begs the question what was the thinking behind closed doors because it, it I, I cannot believe that it's simply a matter of uh, five games the last five games have been the deciding factor in why they decided to end something as significant. I think that's not where I would want to go mm. when it comes to this situation. Mm. The Nigeria Professional Football League only has, say, one, Andy Uba Football Club, mm. as a privately owned mm. club. Yes. Every other club is being owned by the government. Mm. And... Um, I know a case of um, a betting company. I can't call names. I don't want to pay marketing any money for my salary right now. You know, um, approached Shooting Stars, now 3SC, and said, listen, we can talk to you guys. Whatever we make for at the end of the year, we'll give it to you guys. Please. Let us run. Let's run this thing for you guys. They said no. Why? Because the government, they need to get the monies paid from the government oh. consistently, which means... Private companies who even have plans. We, it, 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 it's sickening to know that a Dangote wants to buy shares in Arsenal when there are so many clubs in Nigeria. I mean, there's nothing wrong with Dangote wanting shares in, um, in um, Arsenal. No, no, if no. he still wants to run a club in Nigeria, that is all for the better man because it would, open, it would open up a, a, a path for players in uh, that club to go train, maybe even play friendlies against Arsenal, Shooter. plenty of opportunities for exchange programs. But the thing is, we've talked about this in the past, politics is so pervasive in our sports to the degree that even when there's an opportunity for growth. For Let me hold you on. Don't forget what your parents say. Hmm. The hotline on the screen is to tell you what you think about Nigerian clubs being run by the government. Mm. Really? How, when, we, when are we going to get there where private companies run these clubs? Why do pop, the government run almost all, almost all the clubs, really? We can only count, I can only count one in my head right now. Um, Andy Uba Football Club. The rest have been run by government. When, should, when will the government leave? our clubs alone mm. so the hotline is there you can call and what's your opinion wherever you are okay well the, what i was going to say is that even when there's room for growth even when there's room for 
um, significantly higher profit margins. When there's a room for bringing more uh, involvement with the communities that enjoy and watch these footballers pl play for their local team. Government is constantly insistent on using public funds, taxpayer money, to prop up these clubs, and there's very little oversight. The truth is, private sector offers one thing that government can never truly offer competition. And competition is the essence of sports, and it is what drives best performances, best practices. Unfortunately, if government is the one overseeing the running of a government, uh, of, a, of a club, then there's no one to oversee them. There's a saying that says, who watches the watchers? When the government, the, those who are supposed to strictly be in charge of regulation, strictly be focused on ensuring that rules are being followed, financial practices are being in, ensured, and clubs aren't going into um, uh, administration anyhow. When they are also the ones running the day-to-day, -day, funding the day-to-day, -day, then basically there's no reason to check themselves. You can't check yourself. You, you can look at the fact that um, Wyclef Jean, mm. the rapper, said something about a song. I don't want to call the name of the, the company, but he says... How can I be a spy when you're spying me? Mm. You know, the truth be said, Dominic Iofa has been made the club chairman, vice chairman right now. He's part of them. Mm. You know, you're putting someone who's part of you. Mm. Who's watching who? You can't, the watchers cannot watch themselves. First of all, they will not check their own excesses. And we, we as the lovers of football, we are the biggest stakeholders. If government insists that they must run the, these clubs, then they're running these clubs with our money. And if it's our money that is at stake, it's our money that is paying uh, salaries, then our voices should be the ones being heard, not the government's. True. And the only way to ensure, unfortunately, for our voices to be properly heard is for a, a, an order of separation to be created between the government and the clubs by allowing private sector money to step in, take over the running of the club, while the government sits back and does what it's meant to do, regulate. What can we do to ensure that private sector gets involved? I know for one, that every time I go to an agency, mm -hmm. every time I go to look for sponsors, what they say is, if I put my money into this, how can I make sure my money is being spent well? Oh, yes. Transparency has always been key. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, in Nigerian Football League, it's always been a case of these guys want to spend money on. on yeah. Mm -hmm. We know some telecommunications companies, some... Um, um, bottling companies who actually were involved at a point who actually backed up because they said there was no transparency. Never the did. monies were being spent. Mm. And then let's not forget that government coffers are treated like a bottomless well for individuals to come in, get their share, and walk, and walk out. away. So they don't care about the consequences of their actions once they're gone. They pump in money. Uh, agree backroom deals to fund the clubs in a way that is basically laundering money into private hands. And once they're done with that, they move on, and we are left to pick up the pieces. The call line is still on the screen. And of course, um, this is some sad news for us. We just have to make sure that we take government away from our clubs, really. Mm -hmm. But some other news that we have to discuss no fewer than seven black stars players have arrived at camp ahead of the crucial 2022 world cup playoff against nigeria later this week on saturday precisely ghana hosts nigeria for the first leg of their mouth watering encounter on march 25th in kumasi before visiting their arch rivals four days later at the Mashut abiola national stadium in abuja Though Black Stars head coach Otto Addo and the Ghana Football Association are yet to announce the squad for the games against the Super Eagles, among the players spotted in the camp are Arsenal midfielder Thomas Partey, Edmund Addo, Andy Viadon, Swindon Town goalkeeper Jojo Wallacent, Sheriff Tiraspol midfielder Edmund Addo, and Fatawa 
Issa Shaku. Pate and Ian Dom both arrived in Ghana on Sunday evening before moving to the Black Stars base in Kumasi on Monday. The report added that Columbus crew winger Yo Yeboa and Hearts of Oak left back Dennis Karsar have both arrived camp ahead of the mouth watering clash. Other invited players are also expected to join up with the team on Tuesday before they head to Kumasi where they will begin their training. Ghana all come. We have a caller already, okay? Francis is calling from Makodi. Francis, there, good. Welcome on the show. Hello, Francis. Hello, Francis. Okay, we'll, we'll get Francis back, but he, he was calling all the way from Makodi. Mm -hmm. Now, Ghana. Black Stars of Ghana. Complete team. No injuries, nothing. And for me, I have my, 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 my small, small fear. Mm. Because, you know, my, my best player in the Super Eagles for now is the guy who holds the midfield. Is the heartbeat of the team. Indidi mm. is out. Mm. Is out injured. Mm. And then Bonke has been called for the squad. Bonke I hear is very good. I haven't watched him play before though. Uh, we know what to expect with uh, Ghana. We know that it will be a physical match. But we also know that when it comes to... This is practically a derby. And when it comes to derbies, no, form goes out the window. We cannot rely on the fact that we did better than Ghana in the Nations Cup. It's been a couple of months since that already. And at this point now, we must accept that we're starting from scratch. And indeed, it will be a big miss. No Having a strong defensive midfielder who is capable of also playing the pass and vying for the ball aggressively with any one of the uh, Ghana stars in the midfield is, is a big, big loss for us. And if we lose this match, obviously there's still a second leg, but if we cannot win, if we cannot play at least convincingly that we are capable of beating Ghana, then, I mean, obviously, bye-bye to the World Cup. Okay, now, people have spoken about players like Ogene Karu Etebo. Mm. Um, our wings have Moses Simon, our wings have um, Chukweze, and they are saying we shouldn't have a problem, really, mm. against them. Ndidi, yes, a loss, but Ghana is all complete. Mm. The question and we're talking about Swindon Town. Mm. Thomas Partey was at Nations Cup, and were, what did he do now, you know? So, really. I mean, as much as we like to talk about how going back to what works for us is by playing on the wings ghana has played us on the wings forever forever yeah they know what we what we bring and they know <laughs> historically they know Eguavon. even if they don't know him as a coach they know him as a player they know the philosophy of old nigerian okay I, I've, got, I've got francis tear from makodi our correspondent in McCordy, he, of course, the story of the Luby Stars. Welcome on the show, Francis. Hello, good morning. Welcome on the show, Francis. Good morning. So, what's this story about this Luby Stars matter and this Wala? Yes, um, uh, this has come following the additional uh, performance of uh, Luby Stars football club of Makodi in the recent time. Government of the day that owns the club, that finances the club, has made hearing for changes since the inception of this administration. Dominic Ufan, who stepped in, was at when the government of the day came in and brought uh, uh, Mike Idoko. And uh, Idoko was uh, later showing the way out and uh, uh, Come back on the fire statement. And uh, within the period of on the fire summer, no stars uh, performance was rather going down. The action of the government uh, came following consistent pressure from the section of the media and the farm. The government has to uh, give the the outgoing management of three matches and the three matches they lost at a stretch in the recent press conference the governor had 
directly the vice chairman, uh, in the deputy governor, uh, his excellency, Jibra Babun, to look critical into the performances of the club. And after the last match, uh, the Nobi lost three, only five three under the leadership of the interim coach uh, Eugene and that day, Delway was so furious and uh, the government put in the honor of the club had no option than to uh, take decision by bringing um, former international Dominic Ofa whose performances in the past took the team to the national level. Like uh, like my partner said, like my partner Mukayo said, um, yeah. I know Mikey Doko very well. I know Dominic Iofa yeah. very well. Is Dominic yeah. Iofa the answer to Nobi Star's question? Where, where? Hello? Uh, uh, go on, go on, I can uh, hear you. I can hear you. Well, um, the government... Uh, Decision of bringing Dominic Ofa, um, we the parents and all that spectators would know. But maybe considering the track record so far, uh, that made the government to reintroduce him. When Mike Udoko was showing the way out, the government could not give proper reasons whether it was more performance or more. So I cannot definitely tell you that uh, Yopa uh, will be us. When Yopa was speaking to uh, the players and the management yesterday at their therapy stadium daily after the training, he said he is not coming to make magic. He will try his best with his experience to take them out of a relegation stage. Francis. So we, from this side of the state, are praying and hoping Dominic Yosa will try uh, his best to take the club up relegation waters. I want to thank you very much for joining us today, Francis. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. And God bless you. Today. That's Francis, our Benway State correspondent calling all the way from Makodi, saying that, um, well, Dominic Iofa, he spoke to him yesterday night. He spoke to some players. He can't conveniently say that he'll take them out of relegation waters. But, well, changes have been made. Yes. I mean, even if this was, I mean, going to our point, our conversation earlier about private sector owners, even if this had been a private sector um, situation, five losses, I don't know if five losses is enough, I don't to think it's change That's my opinion, the though. entire manager staff. Yeah. But if five losses is all it takes to end up in the relegation zone, it means that they weren't doing too well to begin with. And even a private sector owner would make the same decision, and we see that all the time. Bet, like odds are given at the beginning of Premier League seasons about who's going to get fired first. And it's always a merry-go-round of managers. The manager that lost to this manager walks away this week, and this manager that beat him last walks away next week. It happens. So of course it does. Well, the call line is still on the screen. And, of course, um, our correspondents all the way from Makadi just called and told us why the vice, the, the vice chairman of Lobby Stars was sacked. That's Mike Idoko. And, of course, um, Dominic Iofa. Is now the new vice chairman. We're asking questions. But the question we're asking, the question Mukail and I are asking today is, must government always run these clubs for us? Well, where are the private sector people now? Come on, run these clubs for us, really. We think these clubs will do better with the private sector than the government, really. Now, Manchester City, this story comes in between what we're talking about. Manchester City have topped the Deloitte Football Money League for the first time as the world's highest revenue generating club in the 2020 21 season affected by the COVID 19 pandemic. Now, previous leaders, Barcelona, dropped to fourth in the 25th edition of the table. 
the Spanish club's invest position where 2013-2014 and City with revenues of 644.9 million euros. And a number of sponsors linked to the owners climbed six places. The Premier League champions and current leaders are only the fourth club to the top of the money league after Barcelona, Real Madrid and Manchester United. Real Madrid, 640.7 million euros, was second, and Bayern Munich, 611.4 million. Manchester United were fifth, their lowest to date. Paris Saint-Germain, sixth, and Liverpool, seventh. European champions Chelsea now up for sale, and with sanctions imposed on Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, were eighth. 11 of the top 20 clubs were from the Premier League, the highest proportion ever. Now, Wolverhampton Wanderers entering for the first time in 17th position. Wow. Now, you can still take your calls, though, call, and tell us why we continue to have governments running our Nigerian League clubs. We just read you clubs who are being run privately. Yes. And are doing very well. Yes. Although it is, it has to be said, and without dismissing all of what uh, Manchester City has put in place over the years now, the truth is Manchester City is run like a business affair. True, everything is kept within the uh, within the family. The um, even the naming rights years ago, there was a At an, the Etihad. Yes, there was an issue about the fact that the naming rights was uh, bought out for four hundred million pounds, which was the highest, and I think it's still the record highest. Just to rename them. Yes, for any Premier League. That's what club. private sector does. Yes, although the sponsor is heavily related to the Abu Dhabi owners. True. So a lot of what they've done is bring around the kind of business contacts family contacts and say let us bring all of our efforts into raising the uh, profile of this club however clubs like Wolverhampton who are doing it the old-fashioned way but are still run by small-time business men who are running it in the way that only a business private sector owner can there is first the first time on the list 17th and call me call me self-centered I don't mind if a businessman who wants to make money comes to take over my company. And sure, spend. absolutely, absolutely, really, absolutely. In order to make money, you have to spend money. True that. So he must be spending a whole lot of money to improve the facilities of the club, to buy the right kinds of players, to put the right kind of managerial staff in place, all for the prospect of future successes. And future successes breeds profits, revenue, which will continue to re generate future and it's it's a cycle it's a positive cycle and that's the aim that's the way it's supposed to be but when it's government government can run at a loss and feel like we'll make up for it next year but the truth is when there are corrupt entities at play there's no making up for it next year and then there's administration to administration with different perspectives on what to do okay um i want to thank francis tear our correspondent in Benue State, Makadi precisely, for calling on the show. Thank you, Mukail. Um, thank you very much, Tayo Tia. I call him Tia. He is the one who's behind the cameras. You don't see him, but he makes you see us. <laughs> thank you very much, Francis in them. Thank you very much, Debola. I call him De Blue. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Belema. Thank you, everybody's made it happen. I don't know who's downstairs, but it has to be either Femi, um, Shedrak, or Piro. Thank you very much, guys. D1, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Join us same time tomorrow. Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. I'm leaving you with a Borussia Dortmund. They were left, they dropped points yesterday. 1-1 um, against Cologne, mm -hmm. despite Erling Haaland's very massive presence. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports.